sometimes you have like individual performances impact a game, even though it's a team sport. And then on for Gotham side, they had a player removed from a game. And then it sort of felt like it also impacted Gotham's game a little bit as well. And we're just above the hour mark, right? Before there's any even, there's, before there's any goals mm-hmm. this game, there is a set of a free kick scenario that comes into play. And as Houston is going to take this free kick, Mitch Purse is involved in, in, a, call, in a call and is issued a, a second yellow, which results in a red and a send off uh, for uh, approaching. And the, I think maybe the reaction on the pitch kind of set some things in motion, uh, perhaps because we saw uh, Anumanu also receive a yellow for, for dissent on that. There was a lot coming out of, of Gotham in terms of, you know, the book the body language and the reaction to a call like that. Uh, what were some of your reactions you, as you were kind of watching in real time? Um, I think it's a, a way for um, a referee, Alex Beltier, to get a game under control for sure. I mean, so the fact that Purse already had a yellow card in, in the match, um, in terms of like the officiating perspective, that person is already on thin ice in, in the referee's eyes in what they're doing. And as a player, you need to be smart and understand that you're already sitting on a yellow. So any nefarious foul that you make is potentially going to be a yellow just because you're already sitting on one. It, it like increases the aspect that you're going to get another one. Now, if this if person didn't have a first yellow card and she encroached on a free kick, I think it maybe would have been a card still in that sense because you can't do that. You can't walk up to someone about to take a free kick and and stop them from doing that by being three yards, four yards from them. Yeah. So the fact that she was already on a yellow made it yeah. an immediate yellow as soon as this happened. Then the fact that Anamano gets a yellow for dissent and com- – and, conversing after this card that's something that was a little shocking to me but I also don't know what Anamanu said but from from the broadcaster's perspective and from watching this game there was like five Gotham players around the official so Anamanu must have said something that didn't sit well because then she ends up getting a yellow but um honestly it's like a bad call for Midge Purse I, like, what was she thinking? That's what I think. I'm like, you need to be a smarter player uh, in order to know where you are in the game. You're in the 60th minute. You're already sitting on a yellow card. This kick was not like one yard outside of the 18, right? It was just <laughs> over halfway. It's not like they're about to score and you're like, yeah. hey, I'm going to take one for the team. And yeah, the positioning it. of it was like really. Yeah, I don't think it was necessary for a purse to step in front of the ball and try to block this, slow down the play at all at all yeah it's um i just think it's it just kind of like goes in line maybe a little bit with like just kind of gotham's season to date quite Mm -hmm. frankly you know it's like i I think people's you know reactions to it probably comes from the fact that it it sort of bleeds into those arguments that people try to make week in and week out about um officiating in the league and i'm gonna i'm someone who's gonna be far less critical of officiating when they actually make the call versus when they don't make the call. So I'm like, okay, well they saw that happening. She was already on, on a yellow and it's a call that um, we don't often see made in NWSL, but that doesn't mean that once it's called, there's going to be like a lot of like chaos around it. So I think that perhaps that's probably some of the energy in, in that it's, it's similar to when, you know, perhaps an official doesn't give the yellow as often for keepers who who time waste a lot, right? There's also a lot of uh, freak out about that when when the, when the official actually issues the yellow about that. So it's like there's this kind of like nitpicky picking and choosing about like when to want to be critical of Resbert versus like wanting to let things slide. I, I think it's just it's just like more more fun, more gasoline to the fire of this of this uh of this actual subject you know but when it got called in real time i was just kind of like oh can't do that it's also like a choice like you you mentioned a really good point about where the positioning on the field that this free kick took place yeah don't try to play games in that moment especially when like Houston's likely not going to 
you know, find themselves in a really, really good opportunity off of this particular set piece, right? So um, I think you've got, at this point in the game, you've got one of your better players on the team sent off. And now this player is going to be unavailable um, for, for the next game. So I think, you know, obviously it goes without saying Gotham FC is a better team when Mitch Purse is on the pitch for them. Uh, but she wasn't for the remainder of this half and will now not be with them for, I believe, the game against Orlando Pride is their yeah, next one uh, coming yeah. up. So um, it's also, again, like it's also the timing in, in which this happens. Like sometimes like you get a player sent off and perhaps it opens things up a little bit differently and players get their teams get different looks because they're forced to kind of make some adjustments. And I think we did see that a little bit from, from Gotham. Um, but again, it's just one of these things where it was just little, little too late. And I think even with this goal from, from Vigiano specifically, you just sort of saw this, it was kind of like a, a clear, more of a, a defensive breakdown for me yeah. versus like a moment of brilliance from, from Vigiano. I mean, she is someone that I think has been having a very quiet, successful season with Houston. She's not someone that I think people are looking at and saying, this is a player that has been absolutely integral to Houston's success. But when you're looking at her and her time on the pitch with this team, she she is. <laughs> the Sophie yeah. Schmitz of it all, I think, are going to be, you know, the focal point and stuff like that. But Vigiano has, has been this type of player additionally in the midfield to kind of give different options uh, for, for the dash. So, um, you know, getting the go-ahead goal when, when you're up against a team that's already down in general in the standings and maybe mentally, and then on top of that, down a player within a game, you just – you're just watching this game and you're like, there's no way they're going to come back from this, right? But then they end up getting a goal, right? McCall Zerboni gets one. It's the but little things, I guess. It's the I little things, I guess. I'm find the silver lining. But after Purse goes out, uh, Menzies has to make a slew of changes, right? Now at this point, you're down a player. Yes, it's a forward. It's not your center back. So th things don't have to shift that much. But three changes happen. This is now the second time in two games that Houston is um, against an opponent that's playing down a player. And last time against Racing Louisville, they couldn't close it out. That game ends in a draw. This time they still concede a goal. Like I'm, I'm nitpicking yeah. here, but Houston, you can't concede a goal when you're up a player. Player. Um, <laughs> score two, you got to hold that shutout, right? Like those are integral points that Houston needs, especially towards the end of this regular season when they're at the top of the standings, they're tied with Portland, but goal differential comes down to being one of the, the tiebreakers. And if you're pushed out of say third place into fourth or fifth into sixth or sixth into seventh, it comes down to goal differential. So that's yep. something that I bet Houston's not too happy about that. They conceded a goal late in this one, but um, Hey, the, these teams, they're back at it again this weekend. So We'll see.